hey everyone before you watch this video why don't you go down there and hit subscribe i know you're gonna like it so go ahead and hit like too thanks enjoy the video what up guys so this is uh saturday morning and it is 40 degrees so that kind of negates any kind of uh body work or anything on that <clears throat> uh i'll put in a little uh clip right here of what i did uh the other day while it was like 60 degrees so i'll put that here So that's what I did. Um, I've got, let me move you a little closer here. So I uh, took that little bit of metal out that was rusted. I treated it like I did the back um, with the Sems rockets, uh, Sems rust stop. <clears throat> and then I welded in a small hole. Uh, there's still a little bit of a weld poking through right here. I gotta kind of grind that out. But uh, then I started fiber filling that whole seam right here. So let me spin you around and then we'll take a peek. So there we go. So as you can see, I still have a little bit of a weld right there. I have to kind of grind that down a little bit better. And then I started forming, not forming, but just filling in right where the, the lead seam was right here. So that's fiber off. Um, Another little tip here, you know, like with this stuff right here, uh, people feel like they have to sand that flat in order to put anything over it, right? So this is uh, right at the stage of doing um, the filler over that, right? So with this little bit right here, all I'll do is uh, I'll take some 80 grit and I'll just kind of scuff that up and then uh, swipe the filler over it. Um, there's no point of trying to sand that out flat because I know that's lower than everything else. So if I do that, I'm going to gouge it out. So this is where people, people like, have, oh, I got to sand this flat. You know, there's like, there's little holes and stuff like that. But, uh, and then they'll sand it out, they'll gouge it out, and then they'll be low again here. And then they're just kind of spinning their wheels trying to keep keep uh, filling areas up that they keep grinding out too much right so I did stick more fiber all right here where it was low it was low right through here um, so I, I put that in blocked that out and then I started blocking out this transition from here to here with my long file right so now that's pretty straight like it's straight enough now to be able to put filler over over that whole section. This part right here was still a little high, so I had to tap that down. So yep, so that's that. But today, since it is 40 degrees out, I'm gonna work on the bottom of this fender. So that is the passenger side fender, and that's all the rust that's there. And this is what the back side looks like. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to work on today. Um, we're going to clean that all up, treat it all, and then start replacing some metal in that section. So that's what we're going to work on today because the welder, the cold weather doesn't affect the welder, right? Plus it'll heat me up, put my hands over, get all warm. But uh, let me start uh, taking care of that. Uh, we'll record uh, the process on that. The other fender is good on the bottom. It's just this fender. So ultimately, um, I still didn't get the piece for the cowl yet. It's still on back order. Um, ultimately, there's that rust repair. A little bit on this driver's side door on the bottom corner. A little bit in the back of that quarter right there. And then the top of that quarter. And then the bottom of that quarter. But uh, yeah, so it's not so bad. And then I'll probably sand all this down uh, with 180, um, just on the DA. Um, well, first I'll flat sand it where the spots are bubbling out, find out what's going on in there, uh, treat that, take care of that, whatever I gotta do to take care of that. 
but I'm going to sand these down with a 180 and then I'm just going to prime them. So with, with something like this going over, now this paint is 23 years old, but it is base clear. Um, so you can do that, right? There's no reason to have to strip this all down to bare metal and, and this, that, and the other thing. When everything is solid there, you just take care of what you have to take care of and prime it, block it, and possibly prime it again and block it again. And uh, yeah, so let's get into this. So there it is. It wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest with you. I thought this whole thing, this whole thing would have been rotted out. But there's actually some really good metal still there. All up in here, down in here is still good. Uh, the side's good on both sides. So uh, we'll make a template. Basically we'll stay along this edge, along that edge, and then we'll come up right there and right there. Yeah, not so shabby. So since I had the grinder with the clean and strip wheel, I decided to strip out this quarter to see what's going on down here. It's not too bad. It's just right there and then up in there. And that's all clean up and through there. So uh, once we finish up the fender, we'll work a piece into that as well. So let's get to work on this fender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the tape tape method of making a template. So I'm just going to lay tape through there and then uh, peel this off and then make it uh, out of metal. take this over to some metal trace it out and this is a little oversized here I don't plan on going this far up but I am gonna go right here and probably in, in about here about a, about an inch and a half in that way it keeps the lip here this keeps the lip there and then I'll go through here right here uh, that way it keeps the bottom part in once I get this off I'll treat behind all that stuff back there. And then, uh, yeah, let's get this over to some metal.
So there it is. So this naturally has a curve. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna mark it and then I'm gonna bring it over to my pipe bender. So my, the two rollers that are together, I can just bring it in and we'll kind of get that. So this is just going to go back and forth until I get that curve right.
So these little guys, you've seen them use, me, use them before. They're just Clecos. So you just kind of put it in there, 3 sixteenths. I use 3 sixteenths. Um, that way I can take the clamps off. And once I position this one, obviously nothing here because there's no metal there. And then uh, probably one right about there. That way it'll always be in the same spot. So when I start trimming this to cut this out, um, it'll, all, it'll be right ish. So, yeah. So I got it cut out. This was what was holding it up, what was left to the brace here. Um, yeah, so this is trash. I got the new piece made. Just needs a little bit of squaring up right through here. But here we're good. I got to trim this up right here. And then we'll trim that bottom piece once we get it tacked into place. Then I'll trim that right up against the line and then weld it across the bottom. But let me switch you around here for this part. So that's what's left of the brace back here. This piece right here has no holes in it and it's solid. But this piece right here, so the sheet metal, this right here, this piece is 18 gauge. So, doo -doo. this piece is 16. So, I think I'm going to try to come in right here, like that, mold it down, and try to put this line right through here. And then uh, cut that out there, cut this out, whoops, cut this out here cut this, this, this out, and then uh, then weld in this piece just for a support like it did before. I mean, I'll let you have a good look at that, but I left the lips intact back here and back here, and then the lip down here because this is still good. It was, it was basically just right here, and right here is like where all the leaves and dirt and all that crud will land and then just melt it away. Okay, so there's two ways of fixing this. Um, one is clean this up, treat it with some of that metal conditioner and then that uh, like pour 15 or what I use is the some rust, rust stop stuff and then just weld the piece in and that's it. Um, because this right here, it's still solid through here so it's not like, it's not twisting, right? Um, or you could 
just cut it out here, panel bond a piece in. I mean, there's all different ways you could do this, right? Um, any way that you do it, even if I were to, even though it was like, I'm gonna cut that out, try to get this uh, little lip in there, try to put it in, um, or clean it up, rust it, rust proof it or whatever, and then panel bond a piece on, or just clean this up and not put anything back there, right? As long as you treat it, it'll probably last the same. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, it'll, it'll last another 20 years um, for sure. Just any way you do it. So I'm not saying, oh, you know, you need to do it this way uh, because this is the right way. Um, it's really about just whatever's right for you, right? I mean, it's how long you want to take on pe making a piece of metal to put it in there. Um, for me, I mean, for me, honestly, if this was my car and I planned on just driving it till the wheels fall off, I would probably treat this, weld the piece in, and then, um, then just put some panel bond across here to, to put this in, and then no one would know the difference, right? That's what I would do if it was mine and I was just going to drive it, right? Um, I'm doing this right here to put this patch in basically to kind of get the practice of doing it. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool just to do it. So that's why I'm going to do it. So let me get this in here, kind of mark this off where I need the, it's just an ever so slight bend. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. So these are all kind of approximates. You know, I think I'm going to try my bead roller. Hold on, let me set that up. Okay, guys, so there's my bead roller. I just put it in the vise. I do have a bunch of dies. Um, so, you know, it's not an Eastwood brand. It's nothing really cool, super cool. It just uh, kind of gets the job for what I need. So let me set you up here, and then we'll set you on here, and let me see if I can roll this out a nice little curved bead in it so we got this kind of set up it's been a long time since I used this so I'm gonna just roll it through and see how it does the step that I want sort of
Not bad. Let's see how that fits over there. So that's the step. That's the right size. So, so now we know that. All right. So now we're going to go over and we're going to beat. We're going to roll the real one, and then uh, we'll shape it, get into place, and then. So let me go. Let me go do this to the other piece. Be right back. Okay guys, so we've got that piece welded in from the brace. This is 16 gauge. Um, I got that lip in there still, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, those aren't the prettiest welds all up in there because there was a little bit going through. You know, the metal was kind of melting away. Um, but we got it welded in here on the bottom where it was still solid, welded along here where it's still solid. So solid like tacked it in and then through here and then through there all the way down and then there was a gap right here but I filled that up and uh, I think there was like a little bit of a gap right there but as long as you go slow with the gaps and it just works so let's start with um, I'm gonna do some weld through primer on that one and then uh, in behind here and then I'm going to start fitting up the other piece. So let's start fitting this up better. I always like to round the corners. They say it's better to... Set up. Alright guys, so right here the lip started blowing out, right there, so I'm going to have to put a new lip in on that side, basically from here to here, but that's not bad, 
through there and then in the front so I have to I'm gonna weld up these two holes for the Clecos and then I'm gonna trim this down here and then weld it to the back on the back there so let me do that real quick so there's the back side welded in penetration all the way through and then I'll clean all this up and then I will uh, use the rust stop but let me uh, get this this lip trimmed down and then I'll weld it across so we got it trimmed down so let's weld it up So the last thing for tonight, <clears throat> I'm going to coat the whole back here. Uh, I wire wheeled it um, to get all the crap off it, but this is that uh, rust stuff. So I'm going to coat the whole back so it sits overnight and dries up. guys so I did this part I, that's the part that I wire wheeled I still want to uh, get all that taken care of treated out but I did all this part so and then uh, right here I still have to weld in a piece for the antenna so I left that open but that is all nice coated let's flip the fender around and take a peek at that So, what was it? Oh yeah, this. That piece. Now that piece. Yep, it came out pretty good. Like I said, I have to cut out a little section right here and then put in another piece for the lip. But other than that, that's awesome. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the morning. Good morning, guys. So, um, yep, it's, it's, it's 40 degrees again today, this morning. And the wind is ripping pretty good out here. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that lower, that lower section right here. And there goes the plane. So I'm going to work on that lower section real quick. Uh, I'm just going to cut out the bad piece and put in a new piece. Uh, the fender came out excellent. Uh, the back side is all dry now. Um, so I still have to weld up the hole up here. So when I do this bottom piece with metal work right there, or bad down there, uh, I'll weld in a piece right here. Um, so I'll show you something on the fender. So you'll see all these little spots. So all these little spots right here, uh, there was, uh, there used to be a chrome trim that went all the way there. And um, these little spots here was where they uh, filled the chrome, uh, well, the holes. And um, <clears throat> what they did was uh, they put fiberglass cloth over it and uh, then they put some Bondo over it and uh, it's starting, you, you can see the weave of the cloth through the, the paint. And uh, you know, overall, 23 years, it's lasted pretty good. So, but uh, what I did is I started sanding those flat um, just to kind of get an idea of what we got going on underneath there. Um, I'll probably kind of dig those out a little bit and then uh, refill those up with either a panel bond to close them up or something because on the back sides they still have the nuts 
and the screws. So I'm thinking the trim hat was like a little, kind of like the windshield. It has like a little barb thing. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. And it would pop on while all the all the bolts are still attached to this with the cloth. We'll see. Once we take it out, if we just have to weld up some holes, it's no big deal. Um, but uh, I just wanted to let you know what those little dots were right there. And that's what they were. So let's get into fixing the rust on the bottom of the quarter. And then uh, the rust re pair on this quarter should be all done and up through up to there where I fixed going the wrong way here where I fixed the hole up there and then then that will be for body work again with uh, being under 60 degrees really when you're doing body work or paint work or anything like that it's not so much the temperature outside it's really the temperature of the panel so uh, if you can get that panel up to uh, a decent temperature, let's say 60 degrees, like with uh, heat lamps, or I've seen some people use those little torpedo uh, propane thingy maboobers, and um, they do pretty good to get the metal up to temp, because um, that's ultimately where it's got to set up. Just give you a little, little insight, little tip there on that one. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, start getting into this quarter panel. Let's get into it. So I'm just doing the tape method again. Basically, this is a piece of tape that I used on the fender. I'm just recycling it. So. Alrighty, so I put the lip on the bottom. It has a slight bow right there. So um, down here is solid, but right through there is not. Um, so uh, to do this, I just have one of those Harbor Freight 36 inch sheet metal brake that's over there. And then uh, I broke it here, here, and then my pipe anvil that I do like curves and stuff. I just set it on there and just kind of tweaked it that way. Um, and there it is. So now I'm just gonna cut just inside that line. seam sealer, a clip for wiring, save that, and then a piece of metal. I, I don't know. And then there it is. So boop and out. So there's a couple ways. One, you can fit it up there real nice, you know, grind, grind, grind. Or the second one is you can bring it up in here, butt weld it here, and then take your, your grinder or your cutoff wheel and then go along it. And that way it'll slide right up in there, right? So let me, uh, we are going to be coating the inside of the trunk with, uh, with the Ram, uh, SEMS rust stop stuff. 
Um, so <clears throat> let me blow all that out. Uh, and then what I'll do is uh, trim this up a little bit more down here to fit up in there a little better. But as far as this side goes, I like that. But that we can bring it in. And then here we could trim it around. Um, I like to kind of round the corners. So let me uh, get my snips and then round that off. And then we'll start working on fitting that up. So there's a drain hole right here actually. So that's good. Well, good and bad because moisture can kick up from the rear tires and fill this all up. But that's okay. Alright, let's clean this up. that this isn't the prettiest one I've done uh, right through here uh, it just started blowing out the metal blowing out the metal through here so I probably should have cut the piece out and then go bigger but what I did was I just filled up you know small tacks to fill up the, the blow out from the metal you know but that's in there and uh, we're good to go here what I am gonna do since uh, I start blowing out the metal right through here is I will be uh, 
throwing panel bond along there in case there's any pinholes. Because when I show the light behind it, I do see a couple here, right here. Um, but uh, with how the metal was blowing through right here, I don't want a chance heating it up anymore. And right here, it is a little low. I can't get down in there to dolly it out because it, there's only this much room on the bottom from the trunk pan that comes down and then this. So I can't get in there. So, but that'll be good um, for uh, replacement, all that metal right through there. Let me spin you around and show you. Like I said, right through here, whoops, right through here started blowing through and then down right here. So in the up underneath, we got it all welded up, all through there. Again, not the prettiest, sorry for the camera work here, I'm trying to hold this. Uh, not the prettiest one, but she's in there. I'll go with that, you know. So this, now that, all day long. So I'm going to clean up the inside um, and then I'm going to uh, rust coat, get it down in there and with my chip brush and then I'm going to come back through here and just do a swipe of the panel bond right through there. It takes 24 hours to cure as I said before. So we'll just set that up and then let that start curing up uh, for possibly next weekend or if it gets warm throughout the week, I'll come out here and hammer on it or sand it a little bit and whatnot. So let's weld this up. Uh, this is the antenna hole. I just got a little magnet and I just cut this out. I wire wheeled the inside of the trunk, uh, knock off all the loose rust and vacuumed it all out, blew it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, the rust stuff up in there. Um, I'm just going to do it with the, one of my paint guns. This, this guy right here is just a Harbor Freight special. Um, but you know, uh, it's like a one eight tip. I do believe a 1.8. Um, so I'm gonna I don't run this stuff through my nice guns. No, so I'm gonna put this in here. This is a PPS system uh, yeah, So it goes on like that This goes on the top and then this locks in like that, right? So let me pull this in here. I'm not gonna strain it or anything. I'm just gonna shoot it through there I'm gonna turn the fan down real tight so I can get all up in there that way it'll coat the inside and uh, it'll be awesome. So let me mix this up and then we'll bring you around and then uh, I'll spray it in. So I'm not gonna put the camera real close cause I don't want this sticking to my, my camera. So uh, I'll shoot it from this way. And then uh, once we're done over here, then I'll pan back and show you. Just like that. Let me bring you in. All right. So there we go. I just took a, a three inch brush 
and what was left in the little container, I just kind of rubbed it right here. So I rubbed it here and then just on this one while I was there. But yeah, so I sprayed that all down in there and now that's coated, so we're good. guys so that's gonna wrap up this weekend um, I did uh, finish coating the back of the fender I cleaned it all up uh, wire wheeled it blew it all off wiped it down and then I coated that since I had all the stuff out and I was doing the inside of the quarter panel um, I'm not welding on this anymore so that's good I'm not welding on the quarter panel anymore so that's good so yeah, that's going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you got a couple of little tricks and tips. I don't know, this go around. Uh, the fender came out way better than welding it up, better than the quarter panel on the bottom there where the metal started blowing through. Um, but I did put the, the panel bond. I swiped over all the welded areas just in case there's any kind of pinholes or anything that I didn't get through. Um, so it's all taken care of. And especially on the underneath of the quarter panel where I welded it up because that can be a real big area for water to get trapped up in there obviously because there's a weep hole right here so yeah so I'm just trying to be preventative uh, for down the road um, I'm sure other people would do it differently or maybe cut out that piece uh, I didn't want to so that's how I did it and it seems to work for me so you just have to find your way on what works for you but Panel bond for sure, over areas like that, I recommend it 100%. Um, I am not a metal finisher guy. I do the best that I can with uh, with what I what I know how to do, and uh, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at with that. So again, uh, hit like, share, subscribe, all that other fun stuff they tell you. Uh, the bell notification will let you know when I upload any new videos, and uh, yeah. Go out there and build something cool. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.